Hello everyone, uh, my name is Eduardo, I am the Incubation Engineer for MLOps and on this video, this is the second part of the video uh, on uh, the demo for Prompt Lifecycle Management in GitLab. If you haven't watched uh, the first video, which is the demo, what was achieved under this POC uh, and what would be the impact on UX or like the user experience in developing uh, features, I will link it below. On this video, I will not I will talk a little bit more in depth of what was implemented, how and where we could evolve this tool into both in adoption, but also what are the features that would take uh, it away from a POC into a usable uh, a a usable uh, platform. So just a quick recap. The goal of the project, the, the, the idea behind this how can we make iteration on AI features as quick as possible? How can we make, how can we help teams to focus on the feature that they're building rather than dealing with AI itself, with setting up tools, with setting up, uh, I don't know, the, 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 the classes and everything in the code uh, to access this, this, the, the models. So as a, so what was implemented on this POC, I can, I can look for the, the, the the prompts and here I have the prompt that I created I can create a new one uh, prompt version and I can fetch uh, I can test even passing uh, variables like this let's, uh, let's see Mondays and then I can execute the prompt let's see if it's gonna execute properly yes how I made uh, it tells uh, quick little joke about Mondays using Power Advice. Okay, uh, something that I hadn't shown on the other demo is that I also implemented some uh, compatibility with LangChain. So this is a quick, this is uh, just a quick example. I'm using LangChain Hub to fetch the prompt and this will fetch the, the prompt from, uh, from GitLab and execute. So if we're using uh, uh, LangChain for whatever I think we use, for example, on uh, Autograph, uh, it will be easier to just plug this uh, the feature that this that this POC in there. For let's say, I'm gonna run this, and it will fetch from GitLab instead, and here, and clear throat and speaks like a parrot. So it chains invoke but by fetching from GitLab instead of get fetching from Hub. Uh, okay. So this was what was built, but what it would take, what would it take to take this POC to an actual usable feature? So let's let's talk about that now. Um, so the first point is general improvements to UI. So I went really minimalistic on what I on what this added. So for example, on on the agents list, I just on the agent version, the history. I'm using the the GraphQL ID uh, as as the, the title and everything. So that's there, there are a lot of small UI improvements that need to be added over here. So in current version, this could be better showcased. Um, yeah, so it's not a pretty UI that this was built. Um, so for example, on the list itself. Uh, yeah, it's just a name. Uh, we could add a description over here, the author of the prompt and the prompt version. Uh, filtering and uh, ordering could be improved as well. Uh, so there are a lot of, of small details that need to be improved all the way so it would get into an experimental level. We can work on adding an epic of what would an experimental look like. The second one that is very important uh, that it's not added here is tool support. Uh, I just showed a simple example of a self-contained prompt. It doesn't fetch information from anywhere else. You pass the variables, uh, but it doesn't get uh, information or it doesn't use tools. And we need to be able to also store tools uh, on this prompt manager. And the way I see it, that shouldn't be too much. So I could create a tool that says get weather. And then here, the only thing that it does, it would be a different type of prompt uh, where I could add 
some logic that would be executed uh, when that function. This could be initially, if we're only targeting GitLab, it could be just the name of a class that we are uh, executing on GitLab itself so that we do the full cycle. But it could also be a completely, I don't know, CI step that uh, we were discussing of allowing our colleagues to, to write code over here uh, that is executed against something akin to a function as a service uh, uh, infrastructure. So we could also do document search, uh, for example, uploading a PDF file to the prompt so that it could search so some sort of reg. Everything could be, could be implemented as a simple prompt with some additional uh, capabilities that the prompt can fetch. Um, this could be used uh, as well by Duo. So Duo can uh, add, uh, can uh, mention a prompt uh, to be executed, for example, on the chat. So yeah, uh, but tool support uh, would uh, need to be implemented. Um, the other thing that that I would like to see for a experimental version is proper uh, version. So let's go into Jokester. Here I'm versioning like this. It's just an incremental ID, but that's that doesn't tell much. Uh, to like, if I am a developer working on this AI feature, I would like to version this in a more meaningful way, uh, either by hash or by you know, by semantic versioning, so that I can instruct the, the, the application that is consuming this prompt, what are the expectations of this improved uh, version, right? So not using a incremental ID, but something like a string that is, or a name that is given by, that the user can give, or semantic versioning, that is what we adopted for uh, model registry and that works pretty well. So probably over here as well, more uh, semantic versioning. Uh, but also something that I wanna, I would like to see being explored is when I create a new prompt, this is a text, right? This is a text uh, field. But if we consider that prompt is code and it should be versioned accordingly, perhaps we should store this in a Git repo, internal Git repo, so that we can, uh, create perhaps a snippet even, so that we can uh, version it properly and, I don't know, have code reviews over the, this, the, the, the prompt and, and things like that. So a snippet could be an alternative storage rather than just storing like the, uh, a text blob. All right. Um, another feature that I would like to see for the experimental version is uh, being able to select the, the the model to be used. Right now it's using Entropic uh, because it was the easiest, but nothing, especially after we added Light LLM into the, into the AI gateway, uh, nothing prevents us to allow you, uh, the colleagues to uh, drop down here where they can select a model name to be uh, where that will be executed. That is pretty powerful for uh, our custom models team uh, so that they can uh, up, up improve the, 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 the prompts for Mistral or whatever other models we want to provide support for. So model selection is an important feature that I want to see here. And, this, and the final one that I really want to see for an experiment that would be required for an experimental version would be better communication between AI Gateway and GitLab. Right now, the way I implemented this is AI Gateway makes a REST request to, uh, get to the GitLab instance when the cycle happens. So if I, there are two flows. One, GitLab calls prompt raw, which is just passes a prompt and GitLab AI gateway executes. Uh, this is what powers the execute prompt uh, feature. But the second one is I don't pass a prompt, but I pass the name of the prompt and the version of the prompt. So the AI gateway needs to fetch from GitLab. Uh, the data is, is stored in GitLab because it's user uh, data, right? It's created by user, in this case our colleagues or the users. So it needs to fetch it from there. And this REST call can be expensive or or, um, or it takes slow. And if we do this on every request, uh, that will take a long, uh, it takes a lot of time. So 
there are some ways of improving this. Uh, so adding a better strategy or prefetching pre this prompt. Um, there are multiple uh, solutions for this, but this is something we need to work on for an experimental version. Cool. And what would be there beyond uh, experimental? What we would go next after we develop an experimental, if we develop an experimental version, the next step would be adding evolve to this. So we are iterating, iterating over prompts, but we also want to see, we don't just want to make it fast to iterate, we want to be able to iterate with confidence. Uh, so I want we want to be able to see, okay, we create a new version. Uh, is it actually better than the previous one? And that's why we have uh, the code evaluation from the, 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 the evaluation framework. And uh, how could we integrate that evaluation framework into this UI? So for example, if I create a new version, this is akin to the verify stage. Uh, if I create a new version, uh, I could trigger a CI pipeline uh, that would display, that would compute the, the metrics and display them into uh, the, the, into the, over here, into the UI itself. So for example, if I go back into the versions or in, into, the, into the main page, I could showcase here on this version of the prompt what was the impact of, of that change. What are the metrics for this version? And on the history, I could showcase what was the evolution across time. Uh, this is very similar to how it happens with, uh, with MLOps. Uh, and it's, we have some support to this on the model registry and would be interesting to bring this over here as well. So adding a vowel would be a great, great evolution of this tool uh, beyond experimental. Um, and then this is talking about the tool itself, but how would we adopt? First of all, does it make sense to adopt? I'm going to talk about this a little bit later, but assuming, assuming that it does, assuming that we want to build this and we want to add this to the product and we want to have our colleagues using this, the best way to my, to, to, to drive adoption of this is, um, feature by feature. So get the features that we have. We are all, we are either way doing this, moving the features from the main code base into, um, into a gateway. So the, the prompts are, uh, are being moved, uh, or will be moved soon. Uh, so instead of, or after moving to AI gateway, we move to the, uh, to this tool, uh, pick one by one see what's missing, implement what's missing, iterate based on what our, what our needs until we can move everything. And then, um, yeah, so that's that how I would be going about adoption. Now, adoption will depend on whether we want to do this uh, or whether you, or should we use something off the shelf, right? Uh, let me delete this one. Um, okay. Why we sh why would we use this tool over and off the shelf? Or why would we use an off the shelf over this? The clear reason why we would choose an off the shelf solution is because we don't need to build it. It's there, uh, especially if it's an open source maintaining. Uh, we don't, we don't have the cost of maintaining an additional feature. Uh, maintaining is always costly and it would speed up adoption of best practices on LLM ops or on prompt live management, right? So that's the main reason is just allow us to focus on building the features rather than building the framework. Um, and that's why we would choose off the shelf. Now, why would we, even that is a good idea, why would I still think it would be a good idea to choose developing this into GitLab rather than using off the shelf solution? One, with the, with the link chain uh, compat that, that I added, um, even if we do choose to use the, an off the shelf, we can migrate very easily later. So, and this is not only for Langsmith. Whatever tool we decide to pick up, 
we can implement, implement a compatibility layer that we can uh, use to migrate uh, to, to GitLab UI instead, right? Uh, so minimal, hopefully minimal uh, support is needed uh, or work is needed for this uh, for migrating from one tool to the other. The second one is we are having this problem and so do our customers. So the problems that we are try trying to solve here are not only ours. Uh, our customers are also having problems on how to manage their prompts, on how to go about implementing it, how to iterate fast, how to evaluate their, their AI features. I wonder if there is a market for this where offset, where this additional cost of maintenance is offset by being a feature that our customers want to use. Um, we don't know. I think this is why it's a good, uh, this is being worked on by, by an incubation engineer, exactly because we don't know. It might be that our users don't want, but it might be that they want. And what is needed to get to a point where it is something that our customers want. Uh, but if we could actually sell this uh, to customers and if it's something that they uh, would like to have, uh, the feature they would like to have, it makes a lot of sense for us to build as a part of the platform, just to increase, to improve the user experience on our platform, the, the breadth of what they can do. We're already doing this with machine learning. This is just the next step. Uh, the third one is that we control the UI to our needs. So we don't need an external vendor to decide that what we want to do is important, what we need, the features that we need are important. We can just go there and implement it. We have control over this UI. And the fourth one, which I quite like, is the power of the platform. If we have this on GitLab, our colleagues don't need to learn an external tool or something else. They they, it's one more thing they can do directly on GitLab itself. Um, and we can integrate across different uh, parts of, of, the, of, of GitLab. So we can add comments so for, for improved discussions. We can link to issues. Um, it just opens up an entire new form of uh, new uh, vertical for us to work with, uh, which, which is quite nice. So, um, yeah, those would be the reasons why, even though it's faster to adopt something else, I would still like to see this becoming part of the GitLab platform. And these two are not, as I mentioned, these two are not much mutually exclusive. As long as we implement some compatibility layer, whatever thing we choose now uh, that best support our teams now, we can migrate later to the to a GitLab uh, management uh, managed solution or within uh, GitLab UI. So this concludes the v this uh, this recording for uh, for the POC on prompt lifecycle management. And again, if you haven't watched the first video, I'll link below. And yeah, we should. Uh, and this is to open the discussion whether this makes sense within GitLab or not. Thank you for uh, watching. Bye.